What's up, everyone, and welcome back to Movie Rays. Riverdale has been one of the most popular teen drama series in recent years, and all the credit has to go to the twists and turns that are happening in the lives of the gang. That, and plus the dark side of the series, seems like the perfect touch to it. And today, we are going to talk about some of the differences between the show and the Archie comics on which the series is based on. Enjoy. Just come to the shore and we'll figure this out together, okay? No! Recap. The series proved to be one of a kind when it first came out, and seems like it was a stepping stone for many new series that came out after it, using Riverdale as a template for their own project. This series introduced a new generation of teens to Archie, if you can even call it that, really. The two franchises share a bit of DNA, but no more than the relation between a dolphin and a human, so to speak. The names and the setting of the series is definitely there, but the details of the two are manifested in different ways, with some of them having nearly unrecognizable results. To put it simply, all of you who are fans of the original, you are in for a big surprise. The tone of the show is much more melodramatic and sordid, compared to a sense of humor in Archie that is so innocent it is practically light as a feather. And without further ado, let's dive right into some of the key differences between the two. Jason Blossom never died in the comics. Starting out strong with one of the biggest differences that were not noticeable right from the start, Jason Blossom's murder, a detail that was a definite success in the series, one thing that seems like dominated the whole first season of the show, only to end with an insidious reveal about the Blossoms' true lives. We got an even deeper dive into their lives. In the original comics, on the other side, Jason fared a much kinder and more boring fate. He was simply written out, not with a murder, however. Sure, he made a few appearances when his sister Cheryl earned her spin-off series, having some adventures here and there, but he wasn't the missing object of fascination the TV adaptation presented him. Betty vs. Veronica Rather than just the rivalry, the television adaptation presented a more evolved portrayal of the dynamic female characters, with loyalties and bonds centered around a boy, but Betty and Veronica's TV adaptation showed a lot more depth, and a very different relationship between the two. When they come in comparison to the bond they shared once back in the day in the Archie comics. Beside the filmsy rivalry, that is not suited for the current society. Their friendship could also simply be there to stir up far more than plot in an hour long television episode than the conflicts of a comic book, right? Thus, we can safely say that where once there was Betty versus Veronica, in today's world we have Betty and Veronica joining sides on more occasions to help each other out. Veronica is not nice in the comics, nor part of a crime family. The Mr. Lodge of the retro comics was much more concerned with keeping in check his daughter's dating life and her unreasonable spending of money, rather than the illegal behavior we now know him for, the way the TV show presents him. The Hiram Lodge in the series is just as wealthy as his pen paper counterpart, but he is a lot closer to being a mob boss than the interfering father the old generation knows him as. His schemes are never ending. On the other hand, however, his comic book schemes sound a lot nicer than we know today. He is not rigging the high school spelling bee anymore. In the series, he is destroying towns without a single thought for their inhabitants. But all that aside, his daughter was not a nice person like the Veronica from the series. And what do you think you'll do now, Mia? Walk away from me? <laughs> You've never been able to do that. An older Mrs. Grundy. Speaking of major updates and makeovers, to a point that they become blatant changes of the facts, Miss Grundy. There is no way that the original secret relationship between music teacher Ms. Grundy and Archie would have been intriguing or even watchable on network television if the creators of the show stayed true to the original. Not only would viewers have missed out on Archie and Miss Grundy's ill-fated bond, but the Black Hood would have been hard-pressed to find a reason to do away with Grundy, or unless her elderly appearance hid equally dark secrets. That said, for all of you who have read the comics will know of just what we are talking about. Miss Grundy is not the young teacher we all sort of liked. She is much older in the comics. I wanted to thank you for talking to my dad. I meant what I told him. I think it could really happen for you. Jughead looks the same, but he is pretty different. While his buddy gained some serious pecs in the transition to the television series, Jughead's appearance looks largely the same. Just like in the comics, he still wears the same sweater, his sister and his dog retained their unusual names, and of course, he has got the hat. That aside, everything else about Jughead has changed. His work ethic and the darkness of his character stand out especially. No high school student can take over his father's gang, stay on top of things, and nap the same time as the original Jughead. 
There is simply no possible way of him doing it all, especially knowing about all of Riverdale's most private conspiracies. And one more thing, and the TV adaptation, he got promoted to a narrator, which is also new. Once Archie had left, it was as if the glue that held our group together had begun to dissolve. First to go was Veronica. Archie's dad was never a heartthrob. To put it very lightly, Archie's father in the comics was never a Luke Perry kind of guy. To put him more to the point, he was a portly man with a bit of weight over the line, a man with a regrettable hairline and a blue sweater. And when we look at it, it makes sense the CW had to update Fred Andrews' look if they wanted the audience to care about his past meddling with Veronica's mother, Hermione, or his tenuous weak relationship with fellow 80s teen star Molly Ringwald's Mary Andrews. It would have been risky to assume audiences would want to see Archie's dad in the same light the comics presented him, the original prototype, and not branched out to the ruggedly handsome, flannel-wearing, modern-day Fred we all fell in love with in the TV series. thought about going pro after high school. More crossovers. Crossovers are always a good thing for every show. There is no doubt about it. In the television series, there aren't a lot. One of the biggest is not even happening on the small screens. Cartoonist promising fans Archie issue 700, wherein Sabrina Spellman causes trouble one town over the Greendale. The original comics, on the other hand, are positively ripe with crossovers so retro they appear totally random to modern audiences, but that was the way it was back in the day. This means that, back in the day, in the 1980s, Archie featured characters from the popular sitcom of that time, One Day at a Time, a kind of title so vague it sounds like it could be a soap opera as well as a comedy, don't you think? Much darker. It goes without saying, but the incredibly popular reincarnation of the Archie comics, the Riverdale series, has introduced us to a much darker tone, a more mature way of doing things, whether good or bad. For example, Ms. Grundy and her appeal to Archie, an educator that has an undeniable illegal habit of relationships with teenage boys, is exactly the kind of scandal that rocks real-world small towns, and it certainly wouldn't fit in the pages of the original Archie comics. Nevertheless, the series proves the fact that this brilliant reimagining of the world into a somewhat new one, with some ingredients on the side, can be good in the end. And sometimes, all an adaptation needs is a little more edgy, dark element in it. On a related note, tell us down in the comments below which of these differences shocked you the most and why. And also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon if you would like to see more videos like this in the future. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.